Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. Uh, last night, we had a change to WWE's Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. Um, we have Braun Strowman going up against Roman Reigns. I still honestly don't know if this counts as Braun Strowman's cash-in. I guess we're just going to have to see how it plays out when it comes to the Money in the Bank briefcase. They make up the rules as they go along, so it, it, it is what it is. I remember when it used to be brand exclusive, and then I remember there was a chance that John Cena was going to get a chance to steal it, and it was the SmackDown brand, but it was, he was going to take it to Raw. All sorts of weird stuff. So it, it is what it is. You know, when it comes out, when the, when the, when they play out the story, we'll figure it out. So I, I honestly was watching Raw last night. I was slipping back and forth between Monday Night Football. And I, I can't even honestly tell you if Braun Strowman was carrying around the briefcase. I don't think he is. So maybe he had to give it up. Or maybe he's just, you know, got a safe place for it to make sure nobody steals it from him. If anybody was going to steal from Braun Strowman in the first place. But we do have something new. Mick Foley putting his foot in the door of the Hell in the Cell, uh, basically wants to talk and rant about how much it changed his life, how much uh, you know it, it took away from his career. Uh, he gave everything he could. Uh, in my mind, you know, Mick Foley is definitely in two of the most popular Hell in the Cell matches of all time. Uh, in my mind, the Triple H versus Mick Foley uh, Hell in the Cell, which was supposed to lead to Mick Foley's first retirement, even though he came back uh, for WrestleMania uh, 16, otherwise known as WrestleMania 2000, one month later. Um, that that is honestly one of my most favorite matches, and uh, you know, of course, Undertaker versus Mick Foley from the King of the Ring is probably one of the most popular, one of the most famous ones. I watched this one last week as I was going through, and um, you know, watching all the old Hell in a Cell matches to get myself fired up, and then put myself in the place like to see if anything in today's age of wrestling is going to be able to compare to those old ones and I, I don't think it's going to. I honestly stopped watching them at one point because I was like today's new style of wrestling with like the sort of PG era we're not going to be seeing Shawn Michaels dripping blood on the cameraman from the top of the cell uh, down below as he's getting pummeled by the Undertaker. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So you can't really compare them to those. You know, I think honestly around 2009 is when Hell in the Cell changed uh, to its new style of just sort of being a wrestling match inside of the cell instead of being a brutal encounter comparing itself to some old NWA style just, you know, leave everything on the mat where you just bleed everywhere uh, and, and sort of do the whole, you know, red is money um, kind of deal. Um, red is green, I think is, is how Tony Schiavone puts it. Um, Mick Foley, you know, being the special guest referee, We've seen this before, especially we've seen this before in Hell in the Cell. The first match that came to my mind um, was Kevin Nash against Triple H. In my opinion, I love you, Triple H. You know this. You're one of my favorite guys of all time. I put you number one, maybe number two, and it changes you know, depending on what I'm talking about. That match was horrible. <laughs> and uh, I don't even really know why Mick Foley was in it. And I think it honestly was pretty much the same reason it is now. I think that, you know, they, they brought back Mick Foley um, thinking that it was going to bring a little bit more enticement to it. I know that WWE Network is going to be showing the uh, 20 years of uh, of the cell show that yeah, that Mick Foley put on. They put on one of his live comedy specials before. In my opinion, it did not translate well to television. Um, I saw Mick Foley live here in Sacramento. I, I, the, I can't remember what it was, the Laugh Factory or, or wherever he came here. It was a cheap show. I think it was 25 bucks. It came with a meet and greet. I honestly thought it was easily you know, one of the best things I've ever paid for in wrestling. The show was fun, but I think it was the environment. I basically was, was sitting at Mick Foley's feet. Um, Noah Donish uh, from uh, No DQ was there sitting at my table. Uh, I met a few other people um, that, that you know, watched my videos, and I watched their videos, and I talked to them on Twitter and things like that. So I think just the atmosphere was a fun place to hear some wrestling stories about, you know, The Rock and Mick Foley going to a sex club in Germany and just seeing some guy, you know, pummel, um, you know, some girl. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. So um, 
we'll have to see, you know, what what comes from this. But I, like I said, we've seen Foley be the special guest referee in Hell in the Cell, and it's not like that guy's going to be taking any bumps or do anything physical in the ring. So it's just might as well be another you know, a special guest referee. Most of the things we've seen from Foley in years past is him doing sort of comedy spots with Santino and other guys in the Royal Rumble. And I don't think that's what he's going to be bringing to this match. So maybe I got to give him credit for more than what it is. But I, I don't know if you can really take Mick Foley serious in today's wrestling, knowing that this guy can't go in there and take any bumps because... You know, he, they're just not gonna let him. <laughs> he's not. He's not the Mick Foley of '98, '99. It's just. Uh, it's just the way it is. I mean, people get older. Uh, Braun and uh, Roman. We've seen these guys get in the ring before. We've seen these guys have physical matches. Um, I think that you know Braun and uh, Roman were, were having matches leading up to WrestleMania 32, re leading up to WrestleMania 33. Um, people were kind of skeptical when Strowman had the match um, against Brock, and he lost because at that time I believe he was you know, close to being undefeated, or he you know had been on one hell of a streak, and, and they'd been pushing the hell out of him, and it seemed like the match just happened, and it just was over and it wasn't like you know Braun just threw the guy around like a sack of potatoes but he beat him pretty fast um uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see you know Braun beat Roman and take that championship and have the shield go on um uh, you know a, a, a run chasing the championship maybe they could even bring in the belt to the shield um where Rollins or maybe Ambrose gets into there and that sort of brings you know, sort of like, who's going to beat Strowman? Are, are they going to beat him as a team? You know, only one guy could be champion. So how is this really going to play out? And, you know, it doesn't really make sense for Ziggler and McIntyre uh, to be hanging out with Braun because aren't they a, a team going after the title? Like, they didn't become a team just to protect the championship for Braun Strowman. They, they got to be wanted soon, too. So what are they really building to? Uh, part of me thinks that maybe we're going to see a six-pack challenge come that might lead to the, the breakup of the Shield, um, where all six guys are going after the championship. But the one thing that's also in my mind is Roman just beat Brock. This was something that we've been looking forward to seeing since WrestleMania 31. And now here we are years later, and you know Roman's just going to lose the belt in his first title defense after finally beating Brock Lesnar. He should be going on the, the longest title reign of all time. He finally beat the beast that no one could beat who held that belt for you know well over a year. Um, he beat CM Punk's title reign um, of, the, of the modern era. Uh, people say it's a different belt. It, it, it is what it is. I mean, it doesn't matter what belt it is. He still held that damn belt forever, and he held it longer than Punk did. Um, and he didn't fight as much, but he was beating, you know, same, basically the same competitors that, that CM Punk was, was, uh, was beaten. Um, but I, I can see this going either way at this time. I'm really picking Roman, but at the back of my mind, I'm saying like, this doesn't make no sense. So I, you, you sort of have to figure out where they're going from here. They're not putting the shield together to not put them in a pay-per-view style match, um, where they're going to be able to make money off of them. Um, so something has to be coming up sooner than later. We're going to have to figure out what it is because Survivor Series isn't until Thanksgiving time in November. So that's still down the road and they probably want to have the shield together, uh, for Survivor Series. So they can't be having the breakup right now. So uh, are they going to be putting the title up in some sort of a, a six man tag? Yeah, that don't make sense either. So we'll figure this out, but you know, the cell is supposed to be beating the, beating the hell out of each other and they'll probably go in there and they'll, they'll do some big spots, but we aren't going to see a match like we saw before.